Hi, I'm Casey Gray. I spent three years as part of a treasure hoard, and you're watching Expertise, Episode 1. If you want to make a great game greater, then you're in the right place, and today's focus is kobolds. These fragile little fellows can serve a number of purposes in a game, from cannon fodder to player terror, though the former is usually how you'll encounter them. Every overlord needs some minions, so if your game includes a titular dragon, kobolds are a perfect pairing. Their populations are numerous to the point of being borderline inexhaustible, and they want nothing more than to serve a powerful scaly overlord who can crush all their enemies. Their draconic heritage is a point of pride for kobolds, and they excel at collecting valuables to ever expand their overlord's pile of treasure. Precious gems and metals can be gathered from the deep mines they dig, though find a jeweler if you want those gems cut properly, and what they don't find, they steal. Small rural towns are a classic target, easily caught by surprise when invaders burrow under their streets, rob them blind in the night, and then retreat as soon as the opposition rallies to face them. Many a hero's quest has begun with such a robbery, sending player characters off to recover a stolen relic, critical supplies, or rescue one of the tasty townsfolk taken captive. They're individually pathetic, with less health than a single sword swing on average, which makes them a delight to cleave through like tall grass when your character has a few levels behind them. Kobolds believe in reincarnation and glorious selfless sacrifice in battle for the greater good of their clan or patron, so it's morally permissible to murder as many of them as you like without ethical concern. In fact, they'll celebrate any who are cut down by the hero's blade, though they respect their tribe or tyrant too much to intentionally throw their lives away without cause. It is not their place to waste what belongs to the Dragon Queen. Most kobolds are little more than difficult terrain to an established PC, and don't rate as even a minor threat to be wary of. The kobolds that aren't are more dangerous than you could possibly imagine. Though D&D's original era of mega dungeons is long past, a seminal piece called Tucker's Kobolds from the 1980s is one every game master should know. You can easily find the article if you google it, but allow me to narrate a revised and abridged version for those who would prefer to simply listen instead. Tucker's Kobolds The most horrible, awful beyond comparison opponents that I've ever seen were simply well-armed and intelligent beings who were played by the DM to be utterly ruthless and clever. Tucker's Kobolds were like that. Tucker ran an incredibly dangerous dungeon in the days I was stationed at Fort Bragg. The depths of this sprawling complex had traps that changed all of your supply donkeys into high CR demons, or dropped the whole party into an acid bath. But the demons were a cakewalk compared to the kobolds on level 1. These kobolds were just regular kobolds, with 5 HP and all that. But they were mean. When I say they were mean, I mean they graduated magna cum laude from the Sauron Institute of Viciousness. When I joined the gaming group, some of the PCs had already met Tucker's kobolds, and they were not eager to repeat their experience. The party leader went over his penciled map of the dungeon, and tried to find a way to avoid the little critters, but it was not possible. The group resigned itself to making a run for it through level 1 to one of the elevators, where we could descend to the lower floors and fight safe monsters like titanic elementals. It didn't work. The kobolds let us get about 60 feet into the dungeon before they locked the door behind us and barred it. Then they set the corridor on fire. It's them, screamed the party leader. Run! Thus directed, our party scrambled down a side passage, only to be ambushed by more kobolds firing with light crossbows through murder holes in the walls and ceiling. Kobolds with metal armor and shields flung Molotov cocktails at us from the other side of huge piles of flaming debris, which other kobolds pushed forward ahead of their formation using long metal poles. There was no mistake about it, these kobolds were bad. We turned to our leader for advice. He had his hands clasped over his face to shut out the tactical nightmare. I think he might have been weeping. We abandoned most of our supplies and donkeys to speed our flight towards the elevators, but we were cut off by kobold snipers who would split move and fire, 
ducking fully out of sight behind stones and corners after launching steel-tipped bolts, arrows, javelins, hand axes, and more flaming oil bottles. We ran into an unexplored section of level 1, taking damage all the time. It was then that we discovered that these kobolds had honeycombed the first level with small tunnels to let them quickly reposition. Kobold commandos were everywhere. All our hirelings died. Our henchmen followed. We would soon be next. I recall we had a wizard with us, and we asked him to throw a spell or something. Blast them, we yelled as we ran. Fireball them, get the little bastards! You want me to slow down? He yelled back. I'd barely make a dent! Our panicked flight suddenly took us to a dead-end corridor, where a giant air shaft dropped straight down into unspeakable darkness. Here, we hastily pounded spikes into the floor, flung ropes over the ledge, and climbed straight down into that darkness, because anything we met down there was sure to be better than those kobolds. We escaped, met some giant burning demons on level 10, and even managed to kill one after an hour of combat. We felt pretty good, but the group leader could not be cheered up. We still have to go out the way we came in, he said as he distributed the treasure.